President Obama's strategy is a payphone strategy, and we're in a smartphone, smartphone world. And, and so we're going to have to change. What he's doing is taking quarters and stuffing them into the payphone and thinking, can't, can't figure out why it's not working. It's not connected anymore, Mr. President. That's Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney laying out his economic plan in Las Vegas on Tuesday. 59 proposals to help create more jobs. Well, tonight, Romney will be in California for a debate with the other GOP candidates. And now the campaign 2012 is in full swing. We want to give you a, a new take on the candidates. CBS's Fast Draw team, Josh Landis and Mitch Butler, here to help us get to know all of the candidates, starting with Romney. And this is going to give folks a chance to know you guys, too, in this uh, little thing you have going on. Yeah, it's good to be here. You know, there's a lot of political coverage, and we decided we wanted to find a different way to talk about the candidates. And out on the campaign trail, they're complex people, but they each seem to have their own identity. And together, they're quite a cast of characters. No, this cast doesn't live in the same house together, but they do survive on votes. They dwindle off one at a time, and they forge strategic alliances, making this campaign something of the ultimate reality show. Every four years, America competes to find out who will be America's next top Republican. Will it be Ron Paul? The doctor. Rick Santorum. The warrior. Or Mitt Romney? The executive. If elected president, Mitt Romney says he'll use his private sector experience to create jobs. I would spend every waking moment doing what I could to get Americans back to work. But long before he made his millions, he was simply Mitt from the block. Willard Mitt Romney was born in Detroit in 1947. The youngest of four kids, he idolized his father, George, who was the head of American Motors and later governor of Michigan. The Boston Globe's Scott Hellman says having a powerful father with strong connections was good training for a future in politics. That being said, Mitt Romney did not stand out as a future leader. I don't think you'll find many people who will say when he was really young that he was destined to be president or destined to run a major company. Faith was Romney's first calling. He left Stanford University to go to France as a Mormon missionary. When he returned to the U.S., he married his high school sweetheart, Anne, went to Brigham Young University, and then Harvard. Then, he started making his fortune. Romney founded Bain Capital, a private equity firm. Mitt's millions allowed him to take his biggest step ever towards becoming America's next top Republican. He ran for governor of Massachusetts and won. In that race, he did not come across as socially conservative. He, he made a real point to cast himself as a, as a social liberal or, or moderate, depending on your view. And so I think, I mean, there's been this endless debate, well, what does Mitt Romney really believe? In his race for the White House, he's changed his tune on issues like gun control, abortion, immigration, and gay rights. His moderate past means Romney has no invitation to the Tea Party and social conservatives distrust him. So Romney's pushing his business background as a cure for the ailing economy. But Hellman warns that could backfire because Romney's goal in private equity wasn't exactly job growth. Was their intention to create a bunch of new jobs? No, their intention was to make a bunch of money for them and their investors. Romney and his wife have five sons and 16 grandchildren. His full hair, square jaw, and scandal-free family make him look like something out of the squeaky clean 1950s. He's hoping his image and resume will make him president in 2012. But first, he must become America's next top Republican. So some cute stuff there and, and educational at the same time, which is very important. <laughs> Why, though, are you framing this Mitch as a reality show? Well, I think, um, you know, he's a very attractive man. He could be on America's Next Top Model, but that's not the reason. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of similarities in that um, when something goes wrong, that's one of the most interesting moments to watch. Uh, but it's, it's not as if we're making light of the political campaign. Mm -hmm. We're kind of making light of reality shows, and if, if reality shows only have the stakes of, uh, of political campaigns, then that would be something. And yeah, Josh, do you ever wonder, because presidential politics, this is big business and it's also serious business. Do you ever wonder that with the animation, sometimes the message maybe gets a little clouded or gets lost, people don't take it seriously? I mean, I think there's a temptation to think that because we think of animation as being kind of kids for kids and kind of fun, but the truth is it allows you to tackle some more complex issues. And it also allows us as journalists you know, we often know things happen. We know we know the facts, but maybe yeah. there weren't cameras there. There wasn't a microphone there. So what do we say? What do we show? And animation allows us to recreate those moments and actually go to those places where there were no cameras, but which actually important things did happen. Yeah. So off the top there, you were sort of laying out the contenders in America's next top Republican. Who's up next? 
Up next, we have, we have Rick Perry. Um, you know, so uh, he he's obviously has a, a rich history, and one of the things we're discovering is that he's a lot, he's not a lot like the other Texas governor we got to know over the last few years, and that's one of the things we'll yeah, be covering. They don't like to be compared to mm, yeah. one another either. Exactly. <laughs> you guys get your work cut out for you. All right. Yeah. Josh Landis, Mitch Butler, thank you guys.